it's it's time to talk about care tour now i we've been kind of like <laughs> we're back we're back we took last month off had some things um like a whole bunch of us had some shit to deal with uh, i'm so grateful that you know we were just we're like all just like supporting each other and just being awesome uh last month was 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 rough um what was rough uh i, I know for me and, and some others but we're we're back um we're back and uh i think we'll eventually begin shifting in format for asians read because i think especially with this section here it very much very much highlighted to me that there really isn't much more to say about Caratour other than or at least show lung other than like this shit's just real silly it's just real silly and it's like while parts of like oriental adventures were like well this is like overtly racist i found that Caratour is very much uh yeah, you could see where they like had the racism in Oriental Adventures and, and there are there is like now more subtle racism in this. But for the most part, this is just really silly. It's like they went to like the, the video store, picked out anything that had sort of Asian looking characters on it, watched and then transcribed the the, the narratives of those into this book. Um so I think in order to prevent fatigue for us and for you know you folks, our audience um, we'll try to change up the format of this show in the future um, to be more sort of topical like what we're doing now. Um, so rather than doing like a like a live read, we've like we did in September, went in, kind of did a pre-read. Um, this time only on technically three page two that two three two pages. Um, just on warriors of the empty hand the show way of combat how they want to portray martial arts in D D, and that's what i think we should be talking about today now we all have like different notes and we all kind of grabbed on to different things um but for me i identified a, a couple of key things that i'd like to bring up in discussion the first one is just like that this Western fixation on the katana, like this <laughs> obsession yeah. with the katana. It's Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like no, it's like this conversation and this kind of like katana fetishism, it would look completely in place in a modern, like, I can I could I could see these words coming out of a white dude's mouth in like today. I, I just I'm just gonna yeah. mentally relive Kill Bill all over again in my head. I, I was say. this whole section remind me of two things. One, the uh the sword the mall sword goth kid oh. that we all knew <laughs> who got the fake katanas at that one shop at the mall. And the yep. second thing it was like this seems like a one hundred percent sincere kung fu hustle. Like Kung Fu Hustle, mm -hmm. fantastic film. We Great all love it movie. because it's a parody. Great and movie. if the more mm -hmm. the more you know about like that stunt culture, and if you love wuxia films and that sort of thing, like it's it's such a beautiful send up to that in a very Edgar Wright sort of fashion. I would describe it as. Um, but this, but it knows that it's taking everything in cheek, right? Like it's very tongue in cheek. And this isn't. It's Do you think this, this is this is an un, this is an unintentional parody? It is yeah. what I would call a uh, pure camp. Um, if you've ever read the 13, like there's a whole treatise on camp yep. uh, as, mm -hmm. as a, yeah. And it's fantastic. I recommend reading it. The Met Gala did a whole thing on it. Some celebrities got it, some didn't. But uh, this is what we call pure naive camp where someone does something so over the top and is so sincere about it. And it's just like the most ridiculous thing, like in the, it, like Gremlins 2 or Trolls 2 or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. like that kind of oeuvre, but like, that's what we're seeing here. The, the room. The room. I was about to the say room. the room. Yeah. This, the is, room. This, is, this has like definitely Tommy was so funny. I did. I, I, all, it was, I did not hit her. I used my cheese. I, I do. I do feel that's like. That's having a pot. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I need to point out too, because we do talk about it a bit, like 
I've kind of gotten bored of the racism in this book. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah like, I have. Yeah. So, so, so it's, far we have like Katana fetishism, this naive yeah. camp, like the, the sort of like the racist threads that have gone yeah. in here, but they met, but mm-hmm. Liana, like how, how are you, how do you feel like they, they manifest in this book compared to other things that we've talked about on Asians I, Represent? <laughs> It's very obvious because, again, because they're like they're, it's written by katana boys. But the the racism, <laughs> the katana that's boys. That, that's a gang right there. <laughs> that that, that yeah. the '90s boy band that never took off. <laughs> Thank God. Sorry, you, you, you set us <laughs> any, off. There. Any, produ- any producers watching? I'm happy to license that term for you. You know, make make your boy band live your dream. Um, but no, it's like it's very clear that it's like partially fetishistic, partially like kind of sincere, but in a, or it's just it's sincere in a creepy way, kind of admiration filtered through the lens of very problematic and racist things that were prevalent in the, in the late eighties. Um, but it's just, it's like, I'm bored of it. It's like, oh, well, here's this again. Here's this again. Like we know, we know the worldview. We know mm-hmm. the kinds of pitfalls that they continue to just, like dive into head first yeah um and it's just kind of ho-hum at this point it's like that that's why i, I think a change great, in greatest format, hits of the 80s yeah I, I think, I, that's why i think mm-hmm. we need to change the format up for this because we know what this is we know what this yeah. is all about right and it's just like you said it just keeps repeating those same sort of stereotypes those same sort of yeah. racist beats and this, we're, and we're really oh, just looking for the new stuff at this point. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, something that we do see that is slightly new but not great, like from a des- from a game mm-hmm. design perspective, is that each of these schools is presented as an adventure hook. But the mm-hmm. thing is that it's the exact same adventure hook again and again. It's like basically it's a setting in which like you and your party, if anyone wants to go, like learn and become part of the Iron Hand School or like the the I don't know the five star school the northern fifth school and there's like one school that's like more for women because it's like not about strength um yeah yeah which is okay. weird uh <laughs> okay. and he's trying to make like, wing chun they try yeah. to make wing chun but basically it's like the same beats over and over again right where it's just like mm. you go you learn the thing and then there's like yeah. certain like weird fetishized like stereotypes where it's like you punch hot gravel or like you have yeah. to take a stone oh, you have to take but a stone th- out of my palm take someone out of my palm come on my, my personal favorite is you have to you have to punch iron sheets and i'm just going yeah okay because that's that yeah okay sure <laughs> but, but but it's just but it's the same thing over and over again right which is like again we're seeing a bunch of laziness here with regards to um, the potential love of the material that can be done. Like it's it's mm-hmm. the same school. It's the same thing over and over again. So just watch yeah. a bunch of movies and then kind of. I, I'm just going to say they probably only watched here. the one movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't even feel like they watched a lot of movies. Like I, I I know a point I was making when I was writing my notes is like, for people who are trying to you know take wuxia, like they've watched less wuxia than I have, and like. I only kind of tangentially consumed wuxia since since you know growing up Viet. It's there's some of that 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 we would get and that we would watch, but it's not a huge cultural thing for us per se. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more Paris by night. Yeah, yeah, sure. Paris yeah. by night, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and like I know we need to do an Asians represent watch party at Paris by night. By the way, sure, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we definitely. also we need, we could do that one after Bao Bali too. Yeah. 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 Okay, let me just let me just put a note. I'll put a note right now. Harris by night. Emma, you were gonna say something? Oh, I was I was gonna say like for some of it, yeah, there might have been, especially in the eighties, like access issues for Mm -hmm. some of the media. Fair, fine, whatever. Uh but in general we were talking about like the problems with Caratour and how it's a little more so it's not such overt racism, but I think uh, that there's value in going over this and having people say, okay, and now here's another example of that exact same thing. Because I think some people are learning about some of these like tropes and things for the first time. 
and there are people who want to see multiple examples of it. And this is a product of its time, but it's also stuff that keeps happening now. Mm-hmm. And so like, here we go. <laughs> here's, here's what it is. This is why it bothers us. It's in the 80s, but we still see it now. It's not overtly racist, but it's still a problem. So like, I don't it's know. It's a problem it's, that it's hasn't so gotten better. I mean, the, the, yeah. the biggest yeah. problem with this is like, yeah, you could situate, like Emma, you said, you could situate it within the context of the 80s. There's a lack of, you know... <laughs> Yeah. There is uh, a lot of, I mean, the same overt racism is going on now, but it, the, the kind of overt racism that folks like us would have experienced back then is just a different kind of overt racism. Right? Yeah. Then, but I still think there are a lot of people who would look at Caratour and be like, I, I don't quite get why this is what's wrong, wrong with it yeah. or why mm-hmm. it bothers you. And, and it's because the legacy of Caratour influences everything that's being made now. And that's one of the biggest problems. It's like, yes, you can mm-hmm. isolate this as a product of the 80s, but its legacy is one of its most harmful things because it is put on this pedestal as the gold standard of Asian settings. And and it's put on this pedestal because, A, there are few things that can compete with it in both like market share and perceived quality. That That is, that is a huge thing there because these legends of the industry produced Caratour, people will hold those names above, you know, you know, Asian folk who make something incredible like Sina Una, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so like that, that's one of the problems with this. Now, in, in terms of like this specific section, the section on martial yeah. arts, <laughs> um, because I think what we should do is like, in the next season of the podcast proper, we should just do a whole episode debriefing Caratour, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because I know that, like, Emma, you're like, I want to do Kozakura. Um, I want to see this a lot in Kozakura because they keep bringing it mm-hmm. up and being like, you know, mm-hmm. the show, they're not like Kozakura. They're not like that, but they can see it sometimes. They can sometimes yeah. see it. <laughs> it's a really it important though. thing to see. Um, but <laughs> if this section, Warriors of the Empty Hand, is... Um, Sorry, I just saw the quote underneath Warriors of the Empty Hand. I oh, yeah. That. It says, yeah. better, a, better a clean fight and an honorable death than to run in fear and lose face. And it goes, most honored Elminster. Um, yeah, so like, this, I think someone else wrote this section entirely because it starts mm-hmm. with flavor text. And then for some reason, it's a letter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We haven't seen yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really never funny. been done this way. And then Jackie yeah. literally said, What is this? A letter? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> now, I, now, I do love that this most dragon. Honorable. This dragon, this, like, maybe just forgot. Like, he's just, just maybe, like, hanging out in his palace that keeps, like, targeting well, here well, and well, there. Here's the thing we know exactly how <laughs> this was written because when yeah. um, this stuff about Bawa was coming out and there were folks who were going to try to remake it. Um, the original person who wrote the Bawa section here was like, yo, I was just fresh out of high school when I wrote this and I had all these notes and I just sent them stuff and they didn't use it and all this stuff. Now, I mean, very clearly, and we've seen this with other products, but they are certainly better at this. The editorial side of this book is just a mess. Um, but that's mm-hmm. not what this show is about, right? <laughs> Um, what editorial? Yeah, yeah what, editorial. that's it, that's exactly it. It's like there's no clear uh, voice here, but that that's something that is um, challenging on um, any project. Like I'm working on a project right now, um, and mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, who changed this one term? Because this one term is like a a really important mechanical thing, and now I have to go through the entire document and edit the whole thing. Or mm-hmm. please don't copy and paste sections of the original the original manuscript, right? Mm-hmm. Don't, don't copy paste that into our current working document. If I'm rewriting everything, please don't do that because I don't know what's where, right? L- let us do it. Like th- this is something that like comes down to like project management um, and having mm-hmm. a clear vision of what you want your book to be. And yep. this also comes from a time when like encyclopedias were really big. Um, and you could tell that they were trying to write it like an encyclopedia 
but with the added narrative flavor of it being addressed to someone as a personal encyclopedia. Now, this mm-hmm. section, Warriors of the Empty Hand, is separated into what what are really like two sort of broad sections. One is just like the show way of combat. How do Chinese people fight? That That's really what they mean here. How do people in China mm-hmm. fight? And then they have a whole bunch of different schools. Now, I think when it comes to like the school section, honestly, for our sake, I would say as an audience, check it out yourself. Although they're just really not worth checking out. It's just pure camp, like Michelle said. Um, I'm just honestly surprised they didn't just like lift all of Fist of the North Star into the Northern <laughs> Fist School. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I, I think one of the things that has stood out uh, in a different way uh, here compared to other sections in Karatur is how they kind of use Japan as a frame of, as a comparative frame of reference for anything else that is Asian. So when they create something Asian here, when they add a new Asian sort of cultural element, narrative element or whatever, it is always framed as either better or worse than Japan and never a separate entity of its own. And Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the, that's a theme that we've seen this entire book, but it is felt very profoundly here because of this fascination with the katana. I'm imagining this like X and Y axis where both of the Mm -hmm. axes are katanas. Like that's how this feels. (laughs) (laughs) On this chart. On this chart. chart. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you're out there, please don't, please make us a, if you want to do a, like a little fan art yeah. of just like There's katana the katanas as a katana graph. Yeah. Um, a katana graph. A sliding scale. A sliding, oh, yeah, a sliding scale. scale of katana. The sliding scale of katana. <laughs> well, it's, it's really like, does it have katanas? And it's just like Asian setting. Check. It's um, like, <laughs> bo- like bones or no bones. Day. Yeah, <laughs> it's really it. But like here, it was really interesting is because like in the show way of combat section, they literally open up with the show are not known for the quality of their sword makers. Now, th- this is something that I wanted to start our discussion with um, because there are multiple reasons why this is here. And there are reasons why I understand them putting this here. Um, one already mentioned, right? Access to literal knowledge in the eighties. I find it highly unlikely that anybody would be able to actually find real good information on Chinese swords, right? You may be able to go Mm -hmm. to a martial arts school and learn a little bit about that or learn a, you know, learn about like maybe Tai Chi and use of swords in Tai Chi, but swords as a core part of like the martial arts tradition, I understand them not having access to that. Um, This is also a thing that you see in overall Western understandings of, you know, Chinese swords. Actually, our friend, Accented Cinema, um, made a video on, like, why people don't know about Chinese swords. Um, And in the end of the video, he basically was like, I really don't know. So I'll spoil the ending for you there. But I will, in my research, I I do know why. Um, Now... You know, there are lots of very famous Chinese swords. Many, many people might not even know a- any of them, right? But Chinese swords figure very heavily in martial arts media, right? You watch a movie like Hero, and it's like Jet Li uses a sword the entire, entire movie. Um, you One of the main characters is a sword master. Is a sword master, <laughs> right? Yeah. You, mm-hmm. you watch, you know, really any martial arts film, and there will be one character who uses a sword. You look at Shinja. Like your hidden dragon. Yeah, where, exactly. Yeah. The, the green, green destiny. destiny. Fighting over the green the destiny. Sword. The yeah. green destiny, right? But you still think about like Western media and like folks who may not consume a lot of martial arts media may not be even able to recall, right? This, you know, a, a, a named sword or a famous sword or like a legendary sword in Chinese culture. And that's totally understandable, right? Swords are just there. Right in Xinxia media, it's like we're flying on swords, we're riding on swords. It's fucking badass, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, 
China doesn't have its sort of like Excalibur legends, right? Um, China doesn't have swords that kind of pervade other forms of media, like in Japan. What's the what's the Emma? What's the grass cutting sword? What's that one? Oh, Kusanagi. Yeah. Yeah. Kusanagi, yeah. yeah. Right. Like you see this sword in in video like, games and Kusana- anime. Kusanagi is not a katana. But see, the, here's the thing, though. These <laughs> legendary blades and these legendary weapons are basically adapted into other forms in, in different media. Right. But you don't see that in China. And that's because in ch- Chinese history, swords weren't named. Swords weren't mm-hmm. named. I mean, there are certainly legendary iconic weapons, right? Like Guan Yu's Guan Dao, right? It's a legendary weapon that everybody knows about and associates with him. But... There is really only one period in China's history where swords were held in such esteem that they were written about uh, in ways similar to Japan and ways similar to Europe. But because of conflict and because of the way, you know, history is preserved, very few people know about this. Um, So... During, I mean, lots of us know about like the spring and autumn period and like the warring states era, right? Um, like of the Zhou dynasty. Um, but there was a state called Yue. Um, and in the Yue state, there and their rivals, the Wu state, they are basically credited by scholars as being the only place where early Chinese sword legends emerged from. And historically, we're one of the very few places where swords were actually named, like had given unique names. And there are legendary bladesmiths who are attributed to these periods. Um, but because Yue um, was one of the warring states that was later annexed by the Qin, their history is lesser known. Um, so the sort of tradition of sword naming and the sort of heavy emphasis placed on swords is not as common or pervasive throughout China's entire history. Um, likewise, you know, with Chinese martial arts, the sword is only one of the 18 weapons of Chinese martial arts. And so there isn't this like central weapon. Um, when you compare it to things like Europe, where like the sword is a knightly weapon and is like is emblemic of the knight, right? Or Western perceptions of the samurai, where they think that the katana is emblemic of the samurai, but the samurai used so many different weapons. Yeah. Well, it was yep. the symbolic weapon yeah. in the and in the last the status decade. symbol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've talked about this before. Like the perception of samurai really comes from only a very limited portion of time. And it's a time when the samurai were not really warriors <laughs> anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> where they were so frantically that... revising history to assure their own relevance. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's where that Japanese yeah. concept even of samurai and swords kind of appears because it gets published a lot by a whole bunch of dudes who aren't allowed to fight anymore. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It does honestly make me wonder just because the the Western history did have this kind of like sword fetishism already in it Mm. which is why you know with the with the 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 samurai and all of the you know revisions and whatnot um it just made the west naturally more inclined to to kind of vibe with that concept because honestly there aren't named there aren't a lot of named swords in japan either and like like i said kusanagi like the the one that is named would be more like a a Chinese sword. (laughs) It's probably like Mm -hmm. a straight blade. And around the time that it comes into being, uh, metallurgy was like adopted from uh, Korea and China. And so swords looked like the swords you see in China (laughs) around the same time. And like the 300 to 600 AD er area, and it's not until much later that Japan started making its own stuff in its, its kind, own way. It's kind of interesting with Kusanagi because I feel like even in Japanese media these days, it is usually portrayed as a katana. It is. Yeah. yeah. 
Also, um, from what and correct me if I'm wrong, like from what I understand about uh, Japan's access to things like iron and steel, and like there wasn't really a lot of that like endemic to the country, and so it's funny that they that this section actually talks about like the superiority of the katana and and Japanese metalwork. When I'm like, actually, no, <laughs> like for a really long time, it wasn't like Chinese weaponry and Chinese swords were just better because they we they had the they had the smiths they had the the technology and so it's it's a little bit again just pointing out just kind of centering in around like dan uh daniel's um observation about like with this fascination with katanas as the apex sword of the east um just is sort of very strange because it obviously belies a lack of research about i guess japanese the 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 history of japanese like swords and metallurgy and whatnot One of but then again no, it could no. be just be like it, it could just be like they just didn't have access back then in the 80s but i could i mean but planes were around i guess they could just fly there i, I don't know <laughs> like yeah that, well people. i mean but even I, in the I, 80s i doubt plane, they would have had that budget but yeah i was gonna say they didn't have the budget for that because even then the like taking a, an airplane flight in the 80s was really expensive that's true. I, I think one thing that's that we I don't think we've ever spoken about in, on Asians Represent is the fact that so you know when they're like yeah you, you, they they they're like the katana is Japanese and the the fist is Chinese. <laughs> oh God, I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> this. The, the, this. Somebody <laughs> clip that. <laughs> <laughs> This. Oh, oh god I'm, someone I'm else just, can clip me just was, pump, like this. yeah <laughs> so they're like yeah you know the, the there's the no swords the, ca the katana is is that's what the section also says right the katana yeah, is japanese the fist is chinese and like the noble lance is european right and they're just trying to create mm -hmm. these distinct differences and i won't even like let's not even get into like the stereotypes they want to say about Southeast Asia, right? Yeah. Um, and like Fish weaponry. <laughs> no, because they would. I, I mean, like joking. a lot of this, like media is like, oh, the the real weapon is their ability to use their terrain, because obviously their understanding of Southeast Asia comes from portrayals of the Vietnam, the Vietnam War, War, right? Mm -hmm. yep. um, yeah. The land is their weapon. The land is their weapon. And it's just like, there's so many problems with that. But mm -hmm. the big thing here that we've never talked about is their, their lack of understanding of, first of all, like ba ba basic history and how cultures, cultures interact with one another. That's that's the first one, and mm. be their desire to create these distinct packages, right? You know, if you if you watch, um, I don't know anything, really anything about Korea, like ancient Korea, um, and I've been watching um, that show Kingdom, incredible show mm. on Netflix, mm. and the, and that that movie, mm -hmm. right? Um, and one of the things that you see in in that particular series is how similar some of the clothing is to china and how similar mm -hmm. some of the weaponry is to japan and you know you watch and i'm like you know this makes total sense because of trade and the context of where korea is situated but in a campaign mm -hmm. setting like this they are like no everything must be distinct everything must be different because trade and cultural you know sort of contact that cannot happen. Yet you go to like medieval Europe and you're like, sword, 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 sword. It's all the same, right? <laughs> right. Everybody Sorry. has the longbow for false. False. Yeah, yeah and no, a long that, sword. That, and a long and, and sword. A long sword. I'm sorry, false. I'm just imagining like a club remix of shots, but just yeah. sword, <laughs> sword, 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 this, but I don't know if anyone will know the reference, but 30 Rock when yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jenna Sog balls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just like going balls, 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 balls. Oh. balls. <laughs> I do, I do want to make a slightly tangential point, Let's too, on this, by the way. Um, you often see, and I will treat this argument as good faith, even though it most often is not, um, you will often see people assert 
that because D and D uses a pastiche of all of Europe for their default. The fact that they are doing this to Asia is fine because turnabout is fair play. Um, no, it's not. First off, and white people should demand better too. Yeah, what like, deity? What deity does to Europe is also bad. <laughs> like, never you're, you're, that. They're like, Europe we do it to Europe so too. Many, so many rich cultures and identities. Uh, and if that is your background, like for example, my I am half Scottish, or well, I think like a quarter Scottish, and I've got you know very various mm. European ancestry in there. But like Scottish is my other primary identifier, and we have a very distinct culture. Mm -hmm. That is more than bagpipes and kilts, by and, the way. And what about claymores yeah. too? Right? Yeah, claymores. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite swords that's, I used to wield. That's what D and D would say. But yeah, like he, here's this thing about like. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, that's yeah. a really good point, Liana. About yeah, just, like, I think accept, yeah. like you shouldn't just accept, you know, this. Yeah. And, and the thing too is like there's a really fantastic bit by James A. Caster, who is a uh, British uh, stand-up comedian, um, who was saying something along the lines of like, "Oh, well, the people always say, well, liberals they should always be even-handed with their criticism." And it's like, no, no, you, you're not. Like, if you see someone. Like he, he pointed out a situation where it was like, if you see someone like a kid bullying another kid, you know, and you just walk over, and you tell that kid, like, you're a piece of crap. And then you'd look at the kid who's being bullied. It's like, you're also really terrible. And like, yeah, I handle that situation really well. I'm so even handed. It's like, listen, you're both shitty. Yeah. You're both, you're both pieces of shit. <laughs> and then you just yeah. walk away. Yeah, you're away both like, bad. I, I handled that. Yeah. I'm My work person. here is done. Is done. <laughs> <laughs> I've saved the world. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, it's just like you, you have to treat these things differently because in the mm -hmm. real world where we all live and engage in society mm -hmm. like uh, we, we are we're treated differently and we're treated not as well because we are people of color and so yeah mm -hmm. that that anyway yeah and, and so like i think like a big takeaway i mean even from like this well if you're watching this live or if you're watching this on youtube with episode 44 of Asians represent where we talked about, you know, connecting and reconnecting with your cultural roots, right? Mm -hmm. This is a journey for everyone and it, it's a, and it's a learning opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we even look at like the mixed race representation episode that we did, episode 43 of Asians represent, right? There is, there is so much more to include in your game that I actually want to circle back to episode 43 because there is a, a thing. I don't know if you noticed Master Quan on page 20 of Caratour. Um, yeah. They have like a Gaijin Kung Fu master, which I would really like to kind of dive into because I would love to hear everybody's thoughts on that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I think with like, you know, this section and I think we should move on from our conversation about like kind of compartmentalizing Asian cultures and holding the rest of them against or as a uh, against or comparing them to japan as a um as an understandable or relatable frame of reference for the western audience is something that they really shouldn't be doing um there should Especially be elements of their, cultural blending their sense too. of japan is a whole bunch of unwashed rage gremlins running around with swords challenging each other to duels for no reason <laughs> yeah so kurosawa movies yeah. But but then they're like, oh, but in but but in China, because they do this in, in Kozakura and Wa, here it's just like, oh it's civilized. We, we just poison people. We're instead. we're very civilized yeah. and, and we don't we don't we don't kill them. We just beat them senseless to show. Or off we our get skills. them arrested and they die in prison instead. It's like yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and the way that you learn how to do this, take the stone out of my hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so I think it's it's really interesting how they've they've kind of tried to portray Asian martial arts here. Now, now I'd like to dive into more of the sort of like the D and D things. A couple of things of note, and I don't think we'd really have to elaborate because this is we've just been saying this over and over again when we talked about like the monk in D and D and whatnot. But in in this thing, they, there's like yeah, because Japan has the the noble katana. China has the fist, and therefore they don't use <laughs> weapons. 
And like, giving us so many good clips, Daniel. So many good clips, oh. right? They're taking out so of context. Many, and so much, like so that. much clip yeah. bait. So but 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 clip. here it's like, right? It's just like, oh yes, like uh, China is so refined, and Japan is only refined in how they kill people, or as Emma said, rage g- rage gremlins with swords. Um, um, but but. The, the thing unwashed just, rage for unwashed <laughs> yes, sorry. yes That's specifically for some reason, unwashed. they call them unwashed scum yes. in this section why now, <laughs> now i will just they say I'll, I'll just say this right the one thing that really needs to change is this idea that martial artists just use their hands just use their bodies uh, yeah that like yeah, that I needs to change draw attention to like one like the whole section that talks about or that introduces the word Kung Fu. Kung Fu. Yeah, I want to move it, that. Mm-hmm. It then, it follows that, like, it says Kung Fu, and then it has a little, like, this is what it is, which is the open hand. Um, mm-hmm. The way of the open hand. And I don't understand um, why it, it's included in a way that's almost, like, that's a translation of the term. You know, like, that's how they, like, oftentimes this is the the kind of logic that you would see in a lot of books that have like terms that are not in English, right? You would say yeah. this mm-hmm. and then include like a, a transliteration of it and then continue. So here mm-hmm. it was like Kung Fu, the way of the open hand. Or am, is, am I saying it right? Is it the way of the open yeah, hand? Yeah, they say way yes, of the open hand. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Kung Fu, okay, yeah. The, known as, yeah, or the, the way of the golden hand. The overall concept itself is, of course, There's like an entire Fu. sentence contained within parentheses as well. <laughs> I, I will say they that. I put that whole sentence. <laughs> it's like they, they are absolutely, though, asserting that that's what Kung Fu Yeah, that's what they which, imply, though. You're right, Agnes. Because it's used interchangeably. Which yeah. is so strange to me because, first of all, like, that's just not what, like, and I think this is, again, like a common problem with uh the character text which is that they would take terms that are real words and then give their own definitions to them but posing it as a translation um which i think is it's, just it's a- actually the translation for karate <laughs> yeah uh, mm-hmm. that's true open yeah, hand. <laughs> yeah open hand yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I guess oh, it's that's... even worse. <laughs> it's even worse. They mistranslated the whole thing. That makes so much more sense now. Because I was like, what does that have to do with Kung Fu? Like, I don't understand. But now that makes sense. It's yeah, that, that, I, that actually do, 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 does make sense. And it at least contextualizes it in a slightly less racist way. So is, is it? Uh, maybe. <laughs> It's still racist, it's just less racist. <laughs> a, a militia, it could have been malicious, but now it just looks extremely ignorant, which is kind of better, I guess. So so the graph is now katana and like racism. Like this is the new graph. <laughs> oh my God. Our no, it's a sliding system. scale. It's a sliding scale. <laughs> it's but it, but it uses another katana for the racism. So it's like a racism is katana on a sliding katana scale. <laughs> but yeah, I think as someone who doesn't, know the classes and like the mechanics of D very well this whole section was just very confusing to me mm. i mean first of all because i was thrown by the definition of kung fu um <laughs> with the definition for karate uh so that i yeah. was like what kung, kung fu, what um so i was already confused but then it was like okay so they don't okay so people have show don't know how to make swords and so they only do the, they only do unarmed combat but, but then they also like, have sword duels which is literally what they said yeah. yeah and then and then like literally the two paragraphs after this it says the show also excel in construction and use of martial arts weapons <laughs> But but to them, it's like the sword isn't a martial arts weapon, right? They're talking about like yeah. nunchucks, which and is they fine. literally say it's that. Sigh. Yeah, they literally like, no, it's like this is Sta- sectional staffs. But the thing is, it just confuses me because like two paragraphs before this, it says the way of the open hand, which is unarmed combat. So like, and everyone has a degree of kung fu that they practice, uh, which is like, which is this way of the open hand. 
um, because it says that everyone knows this, you might be better or worse at it, but you do it. But then, so everyone does the open hand thing, but everyone, but also we use a lot of different weapons that are not swords because we don't, we're not good at swords. We're not good at swords. <laughs> we're not good at swords. We're not good at making them. We're not good so at is, using them. So but is it these. Unarmed, is it unarmed <laughs> combat or is it not? Like, I don't yeah. know. They they do they understand. don't have an understanding of it. That's the problem here. Yeah, it's because they're yeah. like, oh, like the show way of combat is open hand, but also open hands that are closed around weapons. <laughs> it, it's, it's it's I think it reminds what it reminds me of is that someone's trying to do a live commentary of like a martial art of a Chinese martial arts movie where they're like trying to make they're trying to write they're trying to write an essay and they're writing it live as the film is going and they're yeah. just like oh shoot they actually use weapons <laughs> yeah also like level one is tai chi like everyone starts out with tai chi which and I feel bogus. Women. Ba yeah. Can you imagine babies yeah. in tai chi? <laughs> the baby's like lying. They're going. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you remember there was the, like, the oh, one God. thing? The other thing that threw me off in this section was the logistic. Was the was the was the civil logistics of each town has one or two t like dojos and teaching halls, oh, and no, I'm just I going. Should. I'm like, literally, what? you walk into every every <laughs> town has a get out of my dojo. get out of my dojo. <laughs> but like, it's literally like this, this is that thing. It's like we want to have this separate from Japan, but we don't know how to articulate ourselves, so we're going to use Japanese terms. It really is like kung fu hustle. Like it really is just like everyone's <laughs> well, a secret kung fu master. Like it's well, and, 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 yeah, and, and I love that. Like you know, when they do get to that part about like everyone knows a little bit of kung fu and they, everyone solves their disputes with kung fu, and I'm just going, oh yeah, so kung fu hustle. Okay, <laughs> I think no but, duel, but, but they do showdown. But they but they scrap. Rumble. They brawl. Yeah. They rumble. <laughs> uh, um, and yeah. Also, yeah, like yeah, and the magistrate <laughs> is like, why why are you guys having conflict? Fight it out. Fight it out. And yeah. Like, which is, well, which because, is like, wait, but, but also, but like, then we, we had this whole other chapter about do law war. and order. But they yeah. also said that, like, um, uh, they warfare is seen as just an honorable way to settle disputes and conquer new territory. It's like, sorry, fam. Like, I gotta conquer you folks. It's for my honor. Also, uh, we're to by the way, we're totally gonna go un on combat because that's fair. And we're just gonna completely just beat you for it. You mean like the end of yeah. Shang-Chi? Sorry. <sighs> <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. Whoa. Oh, I haven't yeah. seen it yet. Seen no, it. I'm just like big CGI kung fu battle. Mm. Oh, well. Yeah. As expected. As expected. As right. expected. Um, <laughs> but but that that yeah. she's a thing here that like we haven't even talked about yet. And it's that like they literally put in the stereotype of all Asians know kung fu. Yeah. It actually it literally yeah. says it. It the sentence literally says, like Every level of imperial society and shows people are all familiar with at least one martial art, although it's not very. Can you can you imagine if well. everybody knew at least <laughs> one martial art? First of all, you have to master one martial art. Everybody has a lifetime worth of skill. Well, they, hey, they the toddlers start learning tai chi in the very beginning, so like right out of the womb, boom! Also, you're learning tai chi. That would be they, like yeah. saying, yeah, that'd be like saying Liana is like you. You come out of the womb knowing like. Jujitsu, and then also <laughs> like since you're also part scottish like you also can make haggis like that's like your thing oh well, here, no, no, here's, here's the thing like michelle you bring up a really good point and one that uh, i wanted to make and it's that see you you mentioned like jujitsu, and then for the scottish part you went to haggis hilariously you went to haggis yes but here's the thing right and you see this in like uh every D, D supplement and it's this idea that europe doesn't have martial arts and that only asia has martial arts what the fuck is fighting like <laughs> yeah by the way there's an entire technical manual on german long sword yeah or like oh there is an entire industry like practice industry called historical european martial arts right well, Europe right. even had unarmed styles. They have unarmed yes. fighting. Yeah. They have manuals on how to grapple and stuff like that. So again, it's this idea of using martial arts as a way of exoticizing the East. Europe doesn't have this, and they we won't yeah. frame the way this isn't a martial art. Like, like yeah. Europe had okay. its own martial the, the, arts. It's, 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 sorry, it's, sorry, sorry, boxing Liana. is boxing is a form of martial art. It is woefully yeah. different than a, a lot of other fist related combat. Okay. Yeah, my, my apologies, Liana. You would have done. You would have had half jujitsu and 
half you can choose either between caper tossing and <laughs> <laughs> you can either throw trees at people or you can or you can hit them with your claymore <laughs> So those, are, those are both very tempting options. See, I don't, I don't, uh, can no, I, can I take a disadvantage thing. elsewhere and get a bowl? You could, you yes. could make your own style. You make your own style, combine yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you, well, like, like in the stick- chat, jujitsu haggis. <laughs> Instead of jujitsu like, well, you, you can stick the claymore in the caber and then you yeet the caber. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to make a Valor character that can do this at some point. I mean, yeah. here's the thing. I mean, we'll get into, we'll, I want us to end with like the system part. So we'll, I want to talk about mm-hmm. Valor. Um, but, but it's that, 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 that thing that bothers me about this is they're like, yeah, martial arts don't exist anywhere in the world. And on top of that, they further try to reinforce this by in this Masters of Kung Fu section, they, where is it? They literally say that Chinese people invented martial arts. Like, mm-hmm. th- there's a... Hey. Th- in, they, in the West, if anyone like accidentally tried to smack you with their hand, you just be like, I don't know how. And then just grab like, a, I don't know, like his phone and just be like, oh. But, but there's this thing. It's <laughs> like, it's they. Oh, here it is. Literally under the Masters of Kung Fu, they say the show are known as the best martial artists in all of Karatur. Hmm. I think they're kind of playing on the like the the like the 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 Bruce Lee movies and the 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 Chinese nationalism versus the Japanese in that sort of sense there but anyways mm-hmm. they are the inventors of the science of unarmed combat and have devised <laughs> literally thousands of styles now here's the thing to say that like the show are literally the people who invented the punch is just wildly heard first. <laughs> you heard it you heard it here folks right like the japanese katana the chinese the fist we yeah. were the inventors <laughs> of how to do this like it it's just the idea just... that this exists here is just first of all it's really fucking hilarious let's just let's let's you cannot yeah. deny how humorous that is the idea that they basically say that like yeah, we invented how to fight without weapons. So that means that your European D&D characters, when you show up and show, and you're like, I don't have my sword. I don't know what to do. I'm a turtle on his back. It's, it's, it yeah, bothers you, you, me. <laughs> you will always, if, you, if you're not from show, you will always have disadvantage on hand-to-hand combat, and your hand-to-hand combat, like unarmed combat, um, damage zero. is always zero. It's always yeah. zero. Mm-hmm. Unless you're from show. Then it's one or one d four. As we as we are getting into the mechanics, by the way, um, and I can share this in Twitch chat too. So I found the monk class as it would have existed in this period, which is the end of the original AD and D set. So I believe mm-hmm. this yep. this uh, this class that I'm linking is is what would be representing the quote-unquote thousands of martial arts uh, and unarmed combat styles that are present in show. I'm going to put this in the notes as well. Uh, Monks are one of the more deadly classes in AD&D. This power comes at a price with high scores required and other limitations discussed later. A monk must have a strength of 15, wisdom of 15, dex of 15, and a constitution of 11. Uh, monks gain no bonus experience for high stats and do not gain any armor class adjustment from their dexterity score. Sure. Yep. <laughs> Master of Dragons. Master of the. I love how like one character you level up is just like, I hit this XP threshold. I am now a master of this style I have never studied. Yep. yep. I wish. Could if life was like your- that. <laughs> Hey, 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 you only have to be a twelfth you only have to be a twelfth level monk to be a grandmaster. Uh, honestly, honestly, it's like you hit let you're going through it and you hit level you hit um level six and it's just like you, you know that that the matrix is like, I know kung fu. Like yeah. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's liter- literally what this is. Um oh, but, the Wachowskis. But but this I mean, respect to Keanu. That's true. That's true. Respect to Keanu, and I'll watch the next one because we got some we got some a- a- Asian actors in there. And again, my boy Keanu. Um, now, this this idea that like only 
specifically Chinese people used unarmed combat, which they have. Honestly, I, I'm. I wonder if they thought karate was Chinese. <laughs> I um, wouldn't put sense. it past them. I, I, I definitely. Wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised, yeah. right? They see because, they see Asian, and it's like, oh, here it, it, it must yeah, be. Yeah, because Chinese. like in the section on the Iron Hand School, uh, it, mm -hmm. it there was a mix of a lot of things, right? Like it talked mm -hmm. about the family, like. It, it seemed to have an emphasis on like a large family compound, but then it talks about you have to fight an oni. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. For some reason, demonstrated potential are considered for the dojo, and then after that, immediately it says uh, beginning students you act as servants as first, and then learning discipline. But as you progress, you graduate to being treated as clan members. So there's just a lot of like mixed it's a blending of, of asian terms like yeah what do you mean by dojo what do you mean by school what do you mean by clan what do you mean by family we don't know it's all in the same two paragraphs so yeah yeah and i yeah and it's just again it's this lazy blending of of terminology right it's like okay well we need a term for martial arts school we're just gonna call it dojo why don't you just call it school yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, temple. Um or 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 what if the term was different for each region, right? Like in Thailand mm -hmm. it's like a what? Like right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you why don't you mix it up? Um now I want to point out too on this class, uh you start gaining followers and you make your own monastery after eighth level. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's fast. Yeah. Wait, yep. did you, do you, do you, it's like construction skills, one of these Scroll, various things? Yeah, if you, you gotta no, build no, no, no. the temple too. You don't need too. to do construction skills because you can punch iron plates and bend them. So. Mm. <laughs> yeah, at, so at, at eighth level, after you beat another monk of eight, at eighth level, because again, you know, we, we settle mm -hmm. things with violence, uh, um, you start gaining followers. Um, Cause they saw you beat this guy up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, yeah. Like, you take over the dojo. Does it do yeah. well, okay, here's here's the thing though. Here, well, let's also kind of go back to this late eighties, early nineties, like dojo fights were like a thing in North America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were there was very a much a thing in North America. The UFC's roots are very much and the Gracies and Gracie Jiu Jitsu are very much have really? their roots in these dojo fights where yeah. the Gracie oh. family would go and they would actually yeah go into other martial arts schools and challenge their leaders to fights to prove that was, their martial yeah. arts was better. There was a yep. um, a terrible, I forget which movie, what, what the name of the movie was called, but there was a terrible movie that actually used this idea um, mm -hmm. of like competing dojos as an allegory for the Cold Wars. So they actually had like an American fighting a Russian like in a dojo. <laughs> I mean, we had that for Rocky. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's basically Rocky like and... martial arts Rocky. I mean, do, you, do you folks know who... Um, uh, Shu Xiaodong is. I'm not no, familiar. sounds familiar. Okay, so this is uh, it's a modern phenomenon, but Shu Xiaodong is like a, an MMA fighter, not even a oh. a very good one, uh, but mm -hmm. an MMA fighter who gained notoriety in mainland China for going around and challenging traditional kung fu masters. Yeah, in, yeah, in real mm -hmm. fights and and broadcasting them. Um, and it escalated to the point where because God. Chinese martial arts are very much a part of like the, the national and cultural identity of China, that the Chinese government basically said that you cannot have masters anymore because it makes the nation look bad um, in these televised fights between an, an MMA fighter using skills that are not Chinese and beating Chinese masters who are old. Um, some young though. Yeah. Um, but these dojo fights were very much like a thing. Um, so I get what they're what they're getting at here, and I I understand the historical context to it. It's just lazy. Um, mm. It's just lazy. Um, now, one thing that we should dive into is like we've talked about how it's like yeah it's like that naive camp unintentional naive camp that you mentioned michelle it's got that like liana and agatha mentioned it's got this overt racism and as like emma and agatha mentioned it has this like selective like blending of chinese and japanese cultures that don't work and then like jackie like you mentioned that like this thing really stands out in how it like flows right it's mm -hmm. written like a letter whereas the rest of the book is written like an encyclopedia or a reference document 
-hmm. Now, there are going to be folks who then read this and say, okay, well, what do I do in game? Now, on page 20, the last paragraph of the uh, left column, they actually say, when dungeon mastering combat in a show lung setting, first of all, in a show lung setting, it, it, grammatically very weird. You should say when when dungeon mastering combat in where your stories are in show lung or something. Because when they say show lung settings, they're just saying like Chinese settings or because show lung itself mm -hmm. is it's supposed to be the world, right? Um, it is useful to think of the differences between a Japanese samurai movie with its grunts, bellows, <laughs> challenges, yes. and swordplay, and a Chinese kung fu film with showy displays of kicks, punches, and bizarre weapons. Um, bizarre. <laughs> bizarre. And then they kind of go into, like, what are some of your narrative prompts? They say, you know, conflicts between rival temples, like we talked about. Martial arts schools and martial arts masters are very common in Sholung, and many adventures can revolve around themes common to this genre. Now, they haven't really talked about genre in and of itself, um, which is a problem. Now, I can't fault them for that because I find it really unlikely that they would be able to articulate the difference of, like, what wuxia is, right? So mm -hmm. like, and like we talked about this like Agatha didn't we talk about this yesterday like when folks were, like, with like, wuxia, mm -hmm. um, movies and stuff they don't people don't consider it like blend diff like differentiate between these genres is like yeah this is just a martial arts movie, yeah I think it was you who said that Agatha or something I don't remember <laughs> I don't know it was, well, we I, said it yesterday we said it yesterday in the chat yesterday oh okay that was in our chat yesterday after yeah. like, post stream yeah so. This part is something that I kind of want to lean into with the rest of our time because they've given us all of this flavor. Let's not even talk about the quality of it, but they've given us some flavor. And now they're like, okay, here's how you use it. So um, take the Japanese movie, look at your katana slider, and on one end of your katana slider, you have grunts, bellows, challenges, and swordplay. And on the other end of your katana slider, you have... <laughs> showy displays of fist. kicks, punches, <laughs> and... Well, it's not even just the fist, because there's weapons. also bizarre weapons. What does that even mean? Now, because exactly. I, now, now, I was weapons, thinking, like... Also known as weapons. Weapons. Yeah. No offense, like, but about, like, like, there, are, there have been some interesting weapon choices from Europe. <laughs> yeah, also, uh, I mean, like, here's the thing. They're like sword play versus fist play. Um, but, like, mm -hmm. the bizarre weapons, I think, are... <laughs> Uh, I think the bizarre weapons are then basically fist, fist play. Fist another, play. Another, uh, another beautiful, another beautiful clip that we can. Have. Dan Daniel Kwan, piece of advice for all of you folks out there. But here's the thing: it's like the, by saying bizarre weapons, they're basically saying like, oh, these are uncommon, and people. Oh yeah, and somebody in the chat noted fist play is a very different thing. It's true. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And. Uh, Bizarre weapons is basically a way of saying weapons are uncommon, right? Mm -hmm. Weapons are uncommon. Um, so this really doesn't align. Like a lot of the like, oh, Iron Hand School, Five Star School, Northern Fist School, Southern Star School. First of school. all, okay. Sorry. This is First exciting. All, They're okay. like a Five Star <laughs> School. <laughs> I, five stars. Only five stars. Four. Only, only five four stars. stars. <laughs> <laughs> all the the Yelp reviews for this school just all of it five stars. It, it's it's now sitting at four and a half because you know the one waitress was just not yeah. was not it was just not being great. Yeah, they're like and five major movements, and then they only list four. I'm like, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, right? you, Emma, you know why? You know you know why? They're like, oh yeah, speed, leaping, missile deflection, and fainting. But the fifth one. But where's the fifth one? <laughs> well, obviously, it's just, obviously, Jackie, it's a secret because you failed no, no, to, no, no, to, no. to pluck the shiny it's, blue stone from the master's open palm. No, no, no. It's, it's love. We all know oh it's love. The fifth, it's love. Boo. Or is it friendship? <laughs> but yeah. yeah there, there it should be only, friendship. <laughs> friendship, but it's love. <laughs> there are only yeah. maybe missile and deflection. There's a missing comma there. Um, <laughs> so you throw things so they can knock things. Yeah, there's either, a missing, yeah. there's either a missing comma or the last style is secret. I'm, uh, I'm not going to lie. Whoever, whoever did that editing clearly was not counting. 
yeah, yeah. I feel oh like my God. this is also an interesting thing, like about I said five stars and five you know, like if you're Chinese. Then you're like, oh, okay, like the wuxing, the five. Yeah, wuxing, hats. exactly. But that's you not immediately there. think of like the five elements. But first of all, they only list four. <laughs> 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 what is sure an they element? Keep, they always keep. To be fair, though, they always keep missing metal. Anyways, it's okay. Maybe maybe it's the element of surprise because it's not oh. there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that, Michelle wins right there. Wow. Oh, that was good. Um, so it's going to be. Oh, gosh. Michelle, why? Speed, uh-huh. leaping, missile deflection, fainting, and surprise. And surprise. Uh-huh. Also, like, this. Sorry, Daniel, if I derailed. No, I don't care. It's fine. Where you were going was this is the, the five star school or whatever is also where we have the possible mixed gaijin yeah. master. <gasps> Oh, oh, there was t- a, so, so it's there, Tilda Swinton. It's still. Oh. <laughs> there, there is an interesting thing someone asked in chat, and I don't know this personally. Um, they asked if uh, farming implements were commonly used in these kinds of martial arts, which might kind of justify the bizarre. I'm not as familiar. Is that something but you? Far, but farm hands in Europe know? also uh, use their weapons yeah, well, too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, they uh, they actually list a bunch of weapons after they say they bizarre did. weapons like sai nunchaku. Uh, well, sectional staves and rods, uh, laja tang, uh, I mean, and song so, kao. So the uh, the use of farming implements and like and a and a weapons weapon der- like a derived weapon from that, um, like I know for sure that there was a hoe or no, it was a rake. It was a rake that was used by Friar Sand in um, in a journey to the west. Like that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Oh, but yeah, but, Fire Stand definitely had a rake. Now, but if you look at like the sort of the classical, um, big guy. So, so if you so if you look at like um like Chinese martial arts, now the list will always change. Um, but they say like, oh, there's like the eighteen weapons. Um, and they're like, oh, Chinese martial arts are based around the eighteen weapons. Uh, and mm-hmm. for the most part, none of the eighteen weapons are like sort of mundane things. Like the closest thing may be a staff. Um, but the the staff itself doesn't necessarily have to be wood. It may also be iron. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that they also fail to include, which honestly would have been a lot more interesting, is um, and this is what I would have done if you wanted to, if I were to reformat this. Um, in in Chinese uh, culture, like there are like four noble flowers, there are also four noble weapons and each one mm-hmm. serves a different purpose right um there's the jian which is like the chinese straight sword the one that most people are used to it's like the green destiny and crouching tiger and all of that uh the <laughs> jian is like the 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 noble gentleman weapon it's the weapon that like was originally used in warfare but became a uh, a status symbol uh, a scholarly weapon um, when it was replaced by the Dao, which is like the sort of the commander or general of the weapons. Um, the Dao is the Chinese saber, right? And the, the Dao itself would be comparable to like the katana. Um, although there are certain versions of the Dao that are similar to like the Nodachi. Um, there's literally a Dao that's the horse chopping Dao or yeah. the horse beheading Dao um, because it's just like, super big um mm-hmm. and then of course there's the spear and then the staff and those are like the four main ones um the staff is like the grandfather or like the elder of all the weapons because it is the foundation of all things in martial arts there right and then the the spear is really interesting because the spear is not quite noble but important because it is wielded by so many different people and the way you can make the spear move and flow makes it almost like seem like like a dragon and how it like bends if you ever watch the movies like the really good example is like donnie yen against um jet lee and hero when donnie yen is oh, using yeah. the spear and they have that literal psychic duel um right but because the spear is so important in warfare um whereas the Tao is the general the spear is the king right because armies win you know armies are needed to win um and these are like fundamental parts of Chinese conceptualization of weapons. 
and everything is kind of based on these four weapons and rooted out of them, right? The Jian is noble, simple, but takes the longest to learn and master. So it is therefore, you know, the, the gentleman's weapon because you're so refined and you, you know how to use it. Um, but none of that is present here, uh, which is unfortunate because even if they wanted to keep it real simple, they could have reduced everything to four weapons. Um, and it still would have had a lot of really interesting narrative flavor. It would have been a really easy way for them to push product because you could have done like a supplement just on the 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 gentleman's weapon, the jian. Could have done one on the dao, the saber, the chang, the spear, or the gun, the, the like the staff, right? And then you could have had schools dedicated to each one, and one fifth school that uses all four, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was hoping you say a surprise. It's just, or a fifth one, <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Just surprise. Fifth, fifth one, you just use surprise. <laughs> I think it's a, surprise. Like, I mastered all four. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Surprise is that you mastered all four. Right. Or the there could ones. be a, a master who trained everyone and yeah. each student was only able to master one when the master could use all four. The thing mm -hmm. is, I think about like Usha movies, or I guess if you want to say like Kung Fu films, where there are a lot of like really bizarre things that people fight with. It's true. And I, I, that falls under like the improvised weapon. Mm -hmm. Um, trope in a lot of wuxia films right like where people would like start fighting each other with benches um, umbrellas yeah umbrellas like so Jackie like, chan movies really popularize that too in the yeah, exactly. yeah. or that even is... if you watch like the movie shadow bladed umbrellas yeah. that shoot knives yeah that's yeah. a cool so movie i kind of like i understand it it is. where that is coming from um and i feel like if they were to really go wild um uh, and to be like Oh, yeah. like bizarre weapons, like a bladed umbrella, like a hat that spins and cuts people's heads off. You know, like if they if they want to go like really commit to the camp, I feel like I would kind of be down with it. Like, because I'd be like, well, yeah, that's it's just so unrealistic that I wouldn't ex have any yeah. have any expectations about like I wouldn't mentally be mm -hmm. like, okay, but that's not like. That's not how it would be, because like, well, yeah, obviously. Uh, so it becomes then, actually bizarre instead yeah. of just, you know. But yeah. the, but they did that. Weaponry. But they did that though. And they did that in Oriental Adventures. They put the chopsticks there. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, they uh, did. Uh, See, that's uh, where it can go wrong, right? That's where it can go true. wrong when they list chopsticks as weapons, because chopsticks are already seen as bizarre, right? To the West, it's like you're eating with sticks. You're eating right. with her. The, the, yeah, like, these like, books also constantly ascribe some kind of mystic significance to chopsticks. Yeah. Which again. Oh, do they? It's a fucking fork. Yeah. It's a fork. Them. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is an eating so, implement. Just stop. <laughs> yes, I just imagine it. it's like the it's like the Little Mermaid with a fork. It's like that's kind of how I feel like they are with the chopsticks. <laughs> it, it, it's honestly that's very apt. Uh, I'm sure they yeah. I'm sure somebody's like, oh wow, they're eating with tiny little quarter staffs. Like <laughs> but but like yes. here's a pro here's another problem. Like like you 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 brought this up with um actually you know what I wanna ask. Do we wanna talk about Master Lin Quan Shu first? I did have a little rant. <laughs> Let's hear it. All right. Yeah. Here's Go your soapbox, it. Emma. Yep. All yeah, right. Get it. Okay. So uh Where's this description? It's, so, yeah, 20. Uh, 20. Master Lin Kuan Shu is a slender woman with startling blue eyes, obviously the heritage of Gaijin ancestry. Uh, also, they constantly say Gaijin instead of Gaijin. So, it's like if you're going to use a crappy word, at least get it right. Oh, but, I like, that. They, mm -hmm. yeah, I pointed it out. They kept saying Gaijin. Anyways, I hate it when people say something is obvious. I have students do this in papers as if it's a form of argument. It's just like clearly or obviously it's like, no, you have to demonstrate that. But also in our notes, I put like a mini rant about the range of human variation. <laughs> and I just, for something like this, it's like one, it's not obvious. Two, are, is Gaijin here referring to just people who aren't show or people who are not from Karatur? Uh, because people if we're who are not to, from Karatur. Because if we're going to go broad Asia here, there are many people 
from Asian cultures and countries that have blue eyes. And I'm not even talking about like some of the populations that fall within like Eurasia, like closer to the European side, like in general, uh, blue eyes are not as common as brown eyes in all populations, one, but they do occur in pretty much every human population because that's human variation. It's something you learn in like intro to anthropology is that there's uh, just as much variation within a population as there is between two. So like you're more likely to see the full range of human traits within a single group than you are to see like major differences or variation that, you know, exists in one group, but not in another, like blue eyes in an Asian person does not mean they have a particular ancestry. It doesn't mean that they are necessarily mixed and somehow lesser. And like, why did they drop this here in this way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and let people play with it. Yeah. With it's very little, with damaging. very little context, right? It's yeah. like mm -hmm. we're gonna put an exotic, something exotic within something we're already making exotic. Yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I need to point out that, like, of all of the mentioned leaders within the the schools, the martial arts ways uh, mentioned here, the masters, uh, she is the only woman mentioned, and then I just feel like they like. Like that's the style is specifically for women too. Like yeah. that was something it's supposed. That they made a big I think it's supposed about. to be Wing Chun. And there's just something about the whole thing that feels icky to me in a way that is very much like the the Oriental fetishization of women. That is, yeah. and that's one specific section where it's like yeah. okay. Like, I'm not saying that, okay, if something is located in a bathhouse, that it's necessarily sketchy. There are a lot of non-sketchy bathhouses. Yes, we know that. But That's where people time, go to wash. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, like, it's the one that has to do, that has, like, a woman master. And yeah. then they yep. immediately go to talk about, like, attractive traits of yep. this person, mm -hmm. right? Like, yep. oh, slender, startling just, blue eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then also it's in a bathhouse. It just, like, it has a lot of connotations that I do not like. Where it also like, smacks of um, the, memoirs of a geisha. Yeah. Mm. So much so. Like, yeah, yeah. the, the, book, the book has definitely not a, earned enough benefit of the doubt um, for me yeah. for me to think this anything other than very intentional. Yeah. Oh, it's one hundred percent intentional. This is like they wanted to have an exotic dragon lady kung fu master, and like a sexy school, a sexy one, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. yeah, and and when we look, when we contrast that is with that the, the southern <laughs> sexiness, yes. Sex. sexiness, <laughs> sexiness. That's a sex. Yeah, oh, but God. I mean, we contrast that with the other um, master that actually has a little bit more of a description which is uh, Master Lu Willow at the end of page 21, first column. Um, mm -hmm. Master, mm -hmm. the, the Master Lu Willow. Willow is a slight, quiet man with flowing white hair. And it's like his modest manner and dress conceal a potent will. And I, I, again, I feel like we're touching on a couple of, um, I guess, uh, issues with depictions of Asian men, right? Or yeah, they're just you like do the twirl. <laughs> you gotta do the twirl. <laughs> you gotta do the twirl. <laughs> <laughs> also like effeminate, yeah, men, effeminate men, men and modest, mm. slight, quiet. Like this idea of of Asian men not being like physically um, large or like you, they're all kind of small and slight. Mm small and slight small, but they will mess you up <laughs> yeah Just get my and, uh, beard out of the way <laughs> it's like you have to like put out a candle using your will you know what i do i just sit there and wait for it to go out but yeah <laughs> that's that's how my will works Patience. yeah Patience. yeah um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie though when i uh, i was gonna type this into our zoom chat but i'm like i'll just say it when i first passed the test of no wind my mind immediately went to you got to hold in a fart <laughs> yeah, I also thought. I thought like Naruto style, you win by farting. You win by farting in the, in the farting. tune in exam. In the tune in exam. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're all aligned. Are you all? Did you also think that, Agatha? 
I, th- I immediately thought of like the the tuna example. The tuna example when he yeah. beats Kiba. Yeah. yeah. When he beats Kiba, is it, it's Kiba, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't um, move, or did I? Or did I? Or did I? <laughs> or did I? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's it's very much just um, like if we were to do this, if we were to talk about and create something like this within the world of 5e nowadays i mean i think the very first thing is obviously just just i I feel like we would just have to pass this over and make this one asian led and two like have that team make sure that they're doing a ton of research and making sure that there is enough of a distinction between uh, the various fighting styles if you want to represent um chinese martial arts obviously there's a deep wealth and history of everything like that isn't necessarily portrayed within cinema um and you can usually assert you can definitely use like some elements of that there's nothing wrong with you know bringing a little bit of that camp in but you know back up that camp with a lot of uh sincere love and research I, i think that that is i think it's really cool to have these different ideas like presented within an RPG system. I, I just think that there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of um, a lot of hard work that needs to be done in order to do it properly. They did this before. Um, well, a- not before this, but after this, they, the the Book of Nine Swords. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Liana, you mentioned it too on a, on, on the last Bubble Tea Book Club we did. I, I honestly very much like. The it's book a great of Nine book. Swords. It's also it very it's very difficult to find a physical copy. They're very expensive. Yeah. it was very. I'm really book. mad that I sold my. Or actually, I might still have mine now that I think. About you know, it, I, I saw one. That was one yeah. of the books that I really liked. I so. saw one at a local store, um, going for a hundred and twenty nine dollars. Holy yep. shit! Whoa! Yeah. For a yeah. third well, edition D and D book, because it was a very limited yeah. print run. They didn't make mm-hmm. any of them. It was came, it came came out at the same time that like Complete Warrior and these other books. Complete Warrior is one. Well, of it books. was actually one of the last books yeah. from three five. It's a anyways. very good book. I think it's super underrated. Um, yeah. Parts of it, parts of it aren't really super great for five e. Um, but I think that's mostly a flaw with five e. In that, yeah. I don't think fifth edition. D and D without significant modification, something I'm working on, uh, without significant mod- modification, works well for the kind of content we're reading right now in Caratour. because all of this is flavor. Whereas right mm-hmm. now the D and D monk, which is the character, is in and of itself a pastiche of all of these things in one right it does all of the five things it has speed it can leap it can deflect missiles it can faint it can surprise right it has like the the like as jackie put the dim mock it has the death touch right the monk can do these things but they are not they are like they are organized around traditions rather than schools and the reason why they did traditions rather than i mean this is not an official reason but it's a very clear reason why they did traditions rather than schools is because the D&D does not have good mechanics, nor does it encourage you to have your characters learn or have learning and growth be part of the narrative. Um, yeah. And that's why this entire section here will not work in any real D&D game. Because learning, going to a school, doing these things is very much an individualistic thing. Or something that you would do in like the middle of battle and you have your Naruto style flashback where it's all of a sudden Rock Lee kicking the tree stump. Uh, and my guy being like, Neji's a genius of ninjutsu, but you're a genius of effort. Um, and then you being inspired and then pulling out something, right? Like, D&D is so inherently mean, you... a, in, it, D&D is inherently a group game. So if you say wanted to I want to get I want to learn the fifth star of the five star school <laughs> I have to go to this Psych. Ping Chao bathhouse to find Lin Quan Shu, the slender woman with startling blue eyes, obviously the heritage <laughs> of Gajin ancestry. I need to find this person so I can learn this final star but what does this final star actually mean what if i actually get the shiny blue stone out of her hand what does that give me nothing so so you mean that in 
in fifth edition, there is no mechanical support. There is no mechanical this. support for yeah. something like this because. But, but yeah. would there have been it? In no, the that's editions? the problem. That's the problem. Like, yeah. I say D and D in its entirety, except yes. for maybe maybe third edition because of how um, uh, modular it was. You could mm-hmm. have you could have basically say this could have been like a feat at especially at the rate in which mm-hmm. you could get feats in third and 3.5 edition D&D it could be that yeah. um yeah but yeah, it's still yeah. well still yeah, well even, because i i will say because i i thir- because i read through tome of battle so much to, uh, book of nine stores so much so like there's one like a lot of the elements of 3.5 they actually did encourage learning you could learn out as part of your downtime activities and there was a it, they they would break it down there's like a process uh, most of the time, it's mostly gold expenditure. They, they, it's it's mostly gold expenditure because for D and D, the the economy makes no sense anyway. So they're like, "What are you gonna do with two, three million gold?" Well, you gotta spend it on something. Ah, self improvement. There you go. Um, and so it's like there's there's that, and also I mean, like there's a positive lesson there though: spending money on self improvement. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <yeah>. that <laughs> unintentional. <laughs> that was unintentional, but <laughs> but it really was because I don't think anyone was thinking about it at the time. And and so like you like like I remember in Book of Nights, you could literally go and find technical manuals, like like manuals, like they they're like the Europeans find manuals, learn it, or go to a master. They teach you. You spend money and you spend time. And learn these things, and you come back with something, and it's just like now, that now, kind of just faded away. Well, yeah. It, here's the here's the oh. thing: it, there are still bits of it. There there are still things because in Book of Nine Swords they had like m- techniques, maneuvers, stances, yep. things like that. Yep. They're oh, really yeah. neat. <sighs> For, first of all, it doesn't work well with the current way Fifth Edition runs combat because no. of Fifth Edition's mm-hmm. inherent lack of combat crunch. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Martial arts techniques wouldn't work. The just the sheer fact that there is no flat-footed touch and regular AC makes so much of this really difficult to do. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The fact that you cannot now assign numerical bonuses to things for the most part means mm-hmm. that a lot of the really interesting things that are in Book of Nine Swords don't work. At the same nope. time, there are systems like Pathfinder 1, the uh, swashbuckler or the gunslinger, both are classes that had deeds, combat maneuvers, things like that, that were fueled by a currency that was external to the character. Your your panache was basically what the swashbuckler had in mm-hmm. um, there. So you could add things that you could spend a currency on, but in fifth edition, the only classes that had like currency that have currencies really are like sorcerers have sorcery points was like i will spend Mm -hmm. a sorcery point to use surprise of the five stars can't do that right or then there's key points but then already they are incredibly limited um so that's why i think a system that is that has more crunch uh like valor uh, would work really well because literally in Valor, you create your own techniques yep. and these schools become an initial part of your character creation and the conversation that you are having. So Michelle could literally be like, yes, I have a speed technique, a leaping technique, a missile deflection technique, a, a fainting technique, and a surprise technique. And I'll be like... Sexy no jutsu. Sexy no jutsu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, then, yep. and then I would be like, oh... I, my story is like I studied at the real five-star school. So my skills are speed, <laughs> leaping, missile, deflection, and fainting. We don't do surprise <laughs> at my version of five stars, right? But that's a part of the conversation that you're having mm-hmm. at the very yeah. beginning. Because in Valor, you can work that. And this isn't just an ad for Valor, but mm-hmm. go buy Valor. Um, <laughs> or support Valor second edition when that goes on Kickstarter. Um, that's how Daniel right. says, just do it. Just do <laughs> it. Do the thing. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Go. I think we just need to like, we just, I think we just need to like transpose but, Daniel over Shia LaBeouf and then we just get yeah. that and then we're done. We have the green screen. Have the green screen. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, but, but that, but that said, like, it's a part, the point I'm making is that like, it's a part of the conversation that you're having at character creation. Whereas in D and D you weren't getting your tradition, your monk tradition or anything like that until third level. Right, third level or second level? Third level. 
Yeah, third it, level, even, it looks like. Third level. Uh, even I, I pulled then, up the yeah. yeah. You're not getting until third level, or like you're not getting any of your real specialties for any, most of the classes until third level. Yeah, so, no, it makes would, no mm-hmm. sense. Like so, you're a wizard question, or a druid. Like, yeah. My question has been, how would you adapt this for fifth edition? Or are you just saying that we just need to use a different edition? I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna show it. all of you how I would do it off air. Because I'm saving it for Dungeons Day. So I actually so, have a five. I wrote a five thousand word document on how to do it. Um, so Dan- Daniel, hit what, me up if you need help. I want to. I want to. Wanna... We're going to talk. You and I are going to talk. So, yeah, so, absolutely. So, so yeah. something I've been doing because in one of my home games, um, one of my character, one of my PCs is a fighter, but he's also going into rogue, and so we're like, okay. How are we going to make this work? Um, you're as so I'm like, okay, we're going to have you in secret spy school. And I, I'm just making this up as I go along, though, because I'm like, there is no way for me to like, just he's part of the Demir now. And I need to like, I, so I'm like creating these like little side quests for him, essentially. Mm-hmm. And I, it's a real struggle as a, as a, a 5 EDM, because you're just like, I have to balance like all of this group stuff, but I also need to make sure that my my boy is is getting his rogue school in mm-hmm. so he can learn how to pick locks and exactly. things like that. So how it's do like you, you you can't balance you ba- this. Like it's you, it's hard. You can't. And my my players are happy so far. Thank you so much for your patience. But but it's still difficult, you know. Like as a DM, I've been basically just like I have to create my own how to become a demure undercover agent like mm-hmm. thing. Because that's the thing, right? Yeah. Learning and growth is is like it's like the JRPG. It's, it's like oh, I learned this thing. I like I have it now. And there's nothing wrong with that in games, but in a mm-hmm. storytelling game like this, like it. Does it yeah. make sense? That's why I think it's interesting in like Powered by the Apocalypse games because it's also important to highlight other systems. Um, yep. In like Powered by the Apocalypse games, as your character advances, you get new techniques and stuff or moves that you mm-hmm. think match the narrative journey that your character is taking. And the mark of a good playbook in a Powered by the Apocalypse game is that a playbook not only has like a, a very um, clearly defined yet flexible starting point, but the moves and the way you progress through a single playbook can tell multiple stories from that starting point based on what mm-hmm. you pick. So right, Powered yeah. by the Apocalypse would work, right? Like, Agatha, correct me if I'm wrong, but like Hearts of Wulin. Yeah, I mean, I also think that this is this conversation really illustrates a tension point in D D between its like wargaming roots. I am it's I don't know, it didn't start out as a wargaming, it started out as like a what well, it ha- wargaming, it's it's but, it's but roots are it is, wargaming. It, yeah, it is, yeah, it is it is wargaming. I think there is the tension between that and it's like and going into much more narrative um storytelling um it as a part of the gameplay gameplay. Yeah. Because um because like in for example like I think there's just like a split expectation when people are going into D and D, being like, "I want this" or "I want that." Like, I want like all of the crunch of like the very like modular. Like, I I want to be able to min max, to like and then like really plan out my progression, my character progression in terms of the mechanics, and then I want to like just that is where I want to find my satisfaction in gaming. And then there's the other part, which is like, I want to have the freedom to do a lot of different kinds of storytelling. Um, and like, and I feel like the fifth ed is kind of like really a demonstration of that tension because like, for example, in a lot of, let's say powered by the apocalypse games, like a lot of the moves that you end up taking, depending on the game, if you are, like when you level up with enough XP, you can choose which move you want, right? Like you can choose a couple from your own playbook or you can choose a couple from other playbooks. That's usually one of the level up options. Um, and a lot of those moves are not necessarily like stat bonuses. Um, a lot of them are actually just like other narrative type moves that you can take. For mm-hmm. example, like they might be a move where... Um, where like like let's talk about uh monster hearts um mm-hmm. one of the moves that you can take as a ghost is uh, i don't remember what the name of it is called but it's basically you can phase through walls uh and be an actual creep because that's like kind of like the 
that's the theme of that playbook is like you're the loner creep that people ignore but also because everyone ignores you you can kind of like you see a lot more than other people do and you get access to a lot more information and this is like and then so that's that's your theme and it's not really like uh like oh, okay so like what kind of advantages do i have um because of this like what kind of mechanical advantages do i get advantage to like phase through walls no you get just the narrative um uh aspect of your character now before i was just a ghost being sad but now i'm a sad ghost who can also spy on you when you two are making out because i have a crush on you and i know that you don't like me like that's the kind of that's monster um, arts that's very that monster arts. Arts. and that's also like because it is already a, a much more like storytelling based game it monster hearts is a game about playing teenagers who are monsters uh and trying to find your own identity but also being assholes to each other like that is the point right like also known as also being teenagers to each other yeah let's just, oh, yes. let's just, you're just being teenagers <laughs> monster hearts teenagers <laughs> tm <laughs> so like in so like in that one i feel like it's like so some of the leveling up things are just narrative right but like in mm-hmm. D and D, it's like the core of the game is still combat. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like I think it's very tough to like be like okay, some of the level because like for example, like things like this, uh, where you like go to a place and then you learn new moves or like you you like learn like who you are by mastering this path um, by putting out this candle or whatever. Like that's. I think that can just be a, a narrative thing, right? In a different kind of game that is not D um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. anD D. Absolutely, and and it doesn't necessarily need that kind of like crunch consequences. Like you can have moves that are narrative consequences uh, in a different game, because in a different game you don't necessarily need to have those stats laid out in order to make that happen, uh, because like. Oh, like what is what's the game? Quest, like in Quest, mm. right? Like, yep, yep. This could work in Quest, where you just like spend the action point and then this do happens. the thing, and you can make what you want, like exactly what yeah. we did with a Mars character. Quest yeah. is another great so, one. So I feel like this is the. It's actually very interesting to like listen to y'all discuss this because it's like now I am very curious about like the next edition of D and D and like what path it's going to take because this is becoming clear and clear where like the previous. Ed- like the setting that came out with the previous editions are not really compatible with this like well maybe let's just go in the narrative um direction so that we can appeal to a wider audience or so we can appeal to the people who always play D without really paying attention to the mechanics anyway uh, which is a lot of people right like i i understand that but also like it doesn't really work with core D D in my opinion so now D yeah. is in a very tough position because they can't they can't change too much or you get a fourth edition or again. They get four yeah you get a fourth yeah. edition and and we're where like pathfinder exists because the everyone hated the fourth edition direction so they were able to just say hey we're going to doing more of the same and that made paizo <laughs> like that made paizo yeah. what it is today yep. um shout out to the paizo union yep paizo yep. union absolutely paizo union. solidarity yeah um, but yeah it's yeah it, D i I have this thing that I talk about sometimes where I, I talk about kind of like a dead end brand, um, which I very much feel like D and D is kind of in that direction where it's not that the brand has died and that the brand is continuing onward, but because of the accumulated fan expectation, um, it's very much difficult for you to break that box that you've placed yourself in Mm -hmm. um, without experiencing a lot of backlash like one of my and i honestly i love these games but um like heroes of might and magic for example i tend to also view as a dead end brand because um everyone really loved three and and then four tried to do things differently and everyone hated it so now like every everything else is just like oh well, you mean just just like three, pokemon prettier just like the pokemon yeah, video yeah. pokemon pokemon is absolutely a dead end brand in my opinion it's Mm-hmm. very true as someone who still plays pokemon. Uh, me too i'm replaying i'm playing fire po- red pokemon pokemon is i'm playing pokemon. it is doing some very interesting <laughs> things in their spin-off space though <laughs> i am super super excited about pokemon um 
Diamond? Legends. Or, or, RCS Legends. Mm-hmm. Oh, because it's different. Yeah. It yeah. looks really cool. Yeah. And I'm super excited about that. I'm happy to see that they're doing that because they're trying to break out of the dead end. And you're seeing you're seeing like Pokemon Unite and you know, um Pokemon Tournament and I'm really all, all enjoying sorts of other Unite. Stuff. I, I mean like keep say what you want about that, but like I really enjoy Unite just because it's different. Mm-hmm. Also because I can just be Snorlax. <laughs> I mean facts. <laughs> the thing well, Someone guess, let me know okay. when Starmie's available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not yet. I, That'd be cool. I, I guess the question is then like how I mean we I guess we'll we'll Dan will talk about it later, but like yeah. I like right now in these this current iteration of trying to be crunchy, trying to balance the group versus the individual aspect of this, which mm-hmm. is why I'm like, if you, which is why I, earlier when I was talking about these as possible hooks, like you'd have to have a whole party decide like, hey, we're going to learn the five star surprise module. Yeah. Like that, that's what we're going to do. Uh, like, I, I feel like that's like the best way of trying to get this done with the current system. I, um, I think it's, um, oh, sorry, no, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, without splitting the party, essentially. Yeah, like, and, and that's the thing that's that's different here. Because if you look at a kung fu movie, it's very much an individual story. The, mm-hmm. it, for many of the the you could the things that they're looking at here, right? Or, or even if you think about really popular stuff right now, like uh, Word of Honor or like The Untamed, really they follow like a character or two and their journey, mm-hmm. right? Or yeah. Right. So then it's it's Kung Fu Panda, not Kung Fu Pandas. Or I thought, you know, it, we, we could see where this actually goes wrong in other f- popular forms of Asian media. When you look at something like Naruto. Right. When you look at something like yeah. hold, I, hold up, hold up before before hold up. Like my partner, huge fan of Naruto, like literally, I don't know how far into Shippuden, but it's been like a month and a half and has almost done the entire series. Super into it. Right. Um. But if you look at something like Naruto, you have all these really interesting characters you kind of form. And by interesting, I mean like I really hate Sasuke and Sasuke, Sakura really sucks at the beginning. But then you meet these cool characters with really interesting backstories, like Neji's entire sort of backstory about like honor and sort of like slavery. It's it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Or you look at like mm-hmm. Rock Lee as like really an example of like, yeah, you want to try really hard. And then Naruto's own backstory. And then, yeah, sure, Sasuke's tragic backstory as well. But when you have Shikamaru. all of these Shikamaru as well, Shikamaru's story is wonderful, right? And mm-hmm. loss, uh, or even Choji with family expectations and comparing yourself to others and having confidence, right? But you have all these characters with dynamic backstories that are all very different from one another. That's your D&D party, right? Mm-hmm. But in order to explore these backstories and have these characters grow, what ultimately happens is people get spotlight and at the expense of others and they do not connect with one another and that's the problem with D because it's inherently a party-based game now they did release a supplement on how to have like sidekicks and do one-on-one D, but D is inherently not really designed for that for beginners like tons of people play D one-on-one i've done it i think it's a lot of fun but that's mm-hmm. not how it's marketed to you and these martial arts stories these journeys Right, are really difficult to do if you have five people with five different agendas. So interesting. Mm-hmm. I never thought about that. I feel like that is also a result of like the like how much setting material and supplements there are. How yeah. how much there are is for D and D, and so like there are things that are not just inherently tied to each other even thematically or like setting wise so then oh yeah that's very- and that's why audience yeah. because we're almost at time you should listen to if you're a patron of agents represent uh, you should listen to the first episode of no dice no problem because agatha and i talk about this actually in like detail for an hour about how to tell a story how to tell a chinese martial arts story because that's what the next dungeons and asian series is going to be in a way that doesn't fall into the you know the traps of what happened with Naruto and its character development and how you could do something Agatha you do, uh, do you disagree with my analysis of Naruto and how you know it wouldn't work in D&D because of the way characters get spotlighted at the expense of others 
I actually feel like I don't know why that is a bad thing. To have, it's the, like, it's, it's not a bad thing. That highlight specific. I don't think so. But here's the thing. Species. You and I could totally do that. We literally did that for Steve and Dungeons and Asians. It was like Steve, yeah. Steve and Kiana had a whole thing. And Amar and I just, I was the DM. And Amar and I just kind of sat there. We're just like, I love every minute of this. But and not like, but not every, know, like, not every table is going to be like that, right? But like when we played out like um, Amar's character's backstory and everyone else like played different characters. I feel like. Is that not a viable? Like, is that well, not a thing? That I, it's enjoy? it's it's Which not. Is, so, it's, I'm, not I'm, it's not. It's not so, so much. much oh, oh, go ahead, Michelle. It, I, I guess uh, it's not so much that this is an unviable way of doing this because I do it in my games all the time. Me too. Um, and but the thing is that doing this underlines the tension that you pointed out with the D D game itself. Like, this is not precisely what this is made for. It's a lot like when mm -hmm. I make like. When I when I use my like silicon spatula for like everything in my kitchen, like it's probably not oh, the best tool for flipping fish. <laughs> like it's probably not best the best tool for flipping fish. But like I'm gonna do it anyway because I really like this spatula and I know how it works. It's bendy and heat resistant, so like I'm gonna do Easy this. To clean. So, so so in Michelle in yeah. Michelle's mind is D and D the silicon spatula. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, it's I, very I do. much like 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 taking a unitasker and forcing it to make become a multitasker. Yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna I, note I that at the two hour and four minute mark, Michelle says yeah, it's funny. Okay. I do want I, I do want to say, um, and this I think this would be a good standalone episode. This is something we thought about a lot for Valor's design, for example. There are ways to do this, and I, I think there are a lot of you know good ideas. Um I honestly I think this should be its own episode where we talk about um kind of the the personal journey as part of a party and and techniques mm -hmm. to do that because i think that would be very interesting i guess i'm I adding have a this. lot that i would say about it okay i would love that let's uh yep. give me one second while i write this down uh yeah daniel adds yeah while episode. you write that down i i'm gonna add to that because i feel like one thing that is uh i'm thinking back to hearts of wooing and the way that it's a very like one of the mechanics that I think is great in it is that um, a, everyone you create like backstory bonds with like a PC and an NPC um, mm -hmm. and like th it's like a sentence that it's like that has space for you to fill out the names of the PC and NPC and I feel like I wonder if this is also a way but I don't know if that's like something that works with D&D or not in terms of the way that people usually play with D&D but like what if everyone is like you you force that bond like everyone needs to have some kind of like association in terms of their backstory with another uh with another pc so then that it always ends up being just not one singular character's journey but at least two okay so we're i'm gonna add in uh session zeros yes i was about to say mm -hmm. that sounds like a perfect Time. session zero conversation it's always a good session zero yeah. um uh, interweaving, interwoven backstories. Yep. Yeah, that that's the yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna get time. Sorry, Emma. Oh, <laughs> well, we're yeah, gonna sorry. get time, I, but but what I we should do is we should we should do a follow up. And I think basically what we've seen here is that like just to kind of summarize what has happened with this episode. I, I think this entire section on martial arts highlights a couple of things. One, it highlights the really, really overtly the the pattern of narrative design that they've done with Karatur. And it is, it could basically boil down to one thing, right? Using Japan as a comparative frame of reference for other Asian settings within this world can be problematic because not only are you viewing the, you're not, you're viewing things from like not from a culturally relative perspective, but you're also limiting yourself, right, to a really, really rich and nuanced world. Second, you know, we've seen that this is very much a result of the the inaccessibility of experts and materials, like actual educational materials in the eighties, that results in this, as Michelle said, pure naive camp. The third thing is that I believe that this section and the past half hour of our conversation basically boils down 
to one thing. The narrative of Caratour is fundamentally incompatible with the mechanics of D&D. Um, and the martial arts journey and the themes that they wish to evoke with this particular section are better suited for other games where like Valor, Powered by the Apocalypse games, and even Quest, where um, group dynamics and learning are placed above um, things like the sort of the individual or a set predetermined progression. Um, and I think that's the, the fault of this right here. Plus, of course, the racism. Um, at this point, the racism is so background noise. It's like it's, it's, it's so background it's, noise. It's, 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 it's it, at this point, it's the racism is just like point. it's just like oh look, more casual racism. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so it, it is, in the case of like to, to to say that again, I think more eloquently, I think literally Valor, Powered by Apocalypse, and Quest are games that give mm -hmm. players both narrative and mechanical agency over progression, mm -hmm. um, and D and D does not. Um, yeah. And I realized that that may be controversial, and this may be the second time Daniel upsets what the internet. <laughs> the um, second actually, time, actually, Why is only, the second time? Really? only the second time. Really, second time of the year. <laughs> second time of the year, right? Oh, the first, okay, 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 fine. Right, okay, second fine. time okay, of the we'll, year. We'll, we'll have we, you we'll you have still have got out. You still got a month, Daniel. You could get a third in. <laughs> yeah, we'll have, another, we'll have another fun session in the in the green room chat where we can link all of the dumb takes that get sent to you. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I love that. But but that said, we have all of our socials online. All of our socials online. Um, a couple of things here. If you want to learn more about the systems that we talked about, Valor Liana on Twitter. Get a copy of Valor. The physical copies are actually beautiful. You can't. You don't have one at hand because you're actually at a con right now. Uh, there is a con going on, but we are not going to it. We are taking a the first vacation that we've had in like two years. And we're just yeah. going to shopping tax free nice. in Portland. Um, and that's exactly where we're the going right after this. The 90s is alive in Portland. <laughs> the dream of, the dream of the 1890s in Portland. <laughs> um, I love Portland. I love Portland. A good, a good, Portland. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot a, of fun. A good, a good friend of mine lives in Portland. Um, mm -hmm. he has a podcast called the go dig a hole podcast. It's an archeology span podcast for young undergrads who are trying to get into the world of archeology. span Go check it out. Uh, also super into D and D shout out to you, Chris, um, uh, Chris Sims. Um, the, uh, I think, yeah, go check out Valor. Valor is a really great example. Powered by the apocalypse games. I think the way Agatha, I think the way you mentioned monster hearts is a really good example of a game that gives you that control. Um, uh, I I say, well, go check out Monster Hearts. Also, like a really important game to actually play and conversations to have. Uh, and then, of course, there's Quest. Um, go check out Quest. Really simple. I think the thing that's really cool about Quest is that um, I think it's uh, once you get like one copy of the book, it's um, it's really easy for everyone else to kind of get started and play without needing to reference it. It's super quick, but it lacks some of the depth that Valor has. Um, Valor of the three that we talked about is the most customizable. Um, that said, Emma's messaging me. We gotta, we gotta go. We gotta wrap this up. Thank you, folks, for joining us um, for this episode of Asians Read Kara Tour. And special shout out to our patrons: um, Brooke Bright, Pixel Grotto, Daisy May. Thank you, you guardians of the realm, and of course, our most honorable patrons: Ryan, the Wizard Hall, Metal Weave Games, Valorous Games. Liana, um, Emma's got to go, um, but thank you, Dungeon Glitch and Matt, slash Matt, you were super honorable, and the most honorable times too, Epic Impulse, y'all are great, thank you for tuning into this episode of Asians Read Care Tour, stay tuned, we'll be back, who knows what we're going to talk about next, probably, you know, this other topic on party dynamics and session zeros, but we'll see you in 2022, bye everyone. <laughs>